Jake Zemanski. You directed all of Jury Duty. Uh, this is such a wild, fun, audacious show. And what was your first thought when this project came to you? Uh, well, for better or worse, uh, it just sounded like a crazy, almost impossible idea, which is what I'm attracted to. So uh, yeah, it sounded tough. It sounded like a uh, a mental puzzle on, on how to pull it off. Mm -hmm. I know you guys did a ton of pre-production um, and just general like script writing prep to anticipate all of Ronald's reactions to stuff and then building in the camera. So how long was the prep and what, but yeah, and how crazy did it get? I mean, we, uh, gosh, it was at least four months of, of, if you include the writer's room that we had, but we were soft talking about it even before that, like even before we officially, you know, started the show, a lot of us, the producers and showrunner were, kind of talking to each other, making plans before we even officially got going. So it, it was a while. Uh -huh. um, what would you say was the most cha challenging part of prepping for that? Just because you're you're directing this guy's life. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd say, I mean, the, a lot of aspects of it were very challenging. I'd say on the directing side, um, just keeping a sense of reality uh, in general uh, when you're used to, you know, making a TV show that can have a craft service table nearby or can have people call cut or ask for a second take. So there were things as far as like, you know, um, location scouting for this was not like the typical location scouting you do. Everything for us had to be real. We had to find a real courtroom. It couldn't be a set or something that we could dress as a courtroom. Uh, if we wanted a character to say a line or, you know, a story beat to happen, it wasn't as simple as just writing it down in the script. We kind of had to plan the 24 hours leading up to that to make it make sense um, to Ronald. And so it was really viewing prep and production through through that lens, through that lens of creating a reality for someone, not just creating a moment that's going to end up in the show. Mm -hmm. Did you just have a bunch of flow charts of, to anticipate his response? Like if he says this, yeah, you guys have to say this or do this. If he does this, yes, I, I started to refer to it as a directing by flow chart. It was kind of like <laughs> we had our plan A, our plan B, and our plan C, and it was all based on trying to move the story in the direction we needed it to move, trying to move Ronald in the direction we needed him to move, but not forcing it too hard if it wasn't working in the way we thought it would work, because trying to force it might suddenly seem unnatural and, and tip him off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Was there uh, ever a time where he reacted to something for which you guys didn't prepare at all? Like you never thought he would do or say this? We had some, um, I will say, you know, every morning they came to court and they had to go through security, right? Our, our fake security station. And we had written a lot of jokes and uh, planned some situations to play out while people waited in the security line. And I think on like, day two or maybe day three early on, we were playing out a scene where one of the security guards was getting fired and um, the other security guard, you know, held the line up so that she could say goodbye and get on the walkie and call the boss down and everyone say goodbye. And he immediately was just like, what is going on? Like almost too quickly, he said, this is like reality TV. What's going on? Why aren't they letting people through? And so we kind of, we did not expect him to call it so blatantly so quickly and so we kind of immediately abandoned it and pulled back on all kind of bits we had planned in security mm. but was that uh the first time when you're like oh our cover might be blown this could be over because yes we... ab absolutely because <laughs> that was very early and we thought we were doing a kind of an innocent bit you know what i mean to get some jokes out and he immediately noticed it called it out and we could hear on his microphone said this is like a reality TV show. What's going on here? And we were terrified <laughs> that it was that we were three days in and it was over. Yeah. Um, how many other times did you think he was going to figure you guys out after that? I mean, to be honest, we were worried about it every single day. <laughs> it was a very high stress, high tension uh, uh, production room there as we kind of watched it all unfold and calling to the cameras. I mean, just because, you know, Ronald had the human element as, you know, our best laid plans, you you couldn't ever quite fully know what he was going to do. So we just had to be really nimble and, um, you know, not um, insist on sticking to anything too, too hard if it seemed like it was going to 
puncture Ronald's reality. So we just would, you know, move and adjust very quickly on the fly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if this is like the same thing of him realizing it's reality TV, but the, the fake party for Ross, you had James come in yes. and throw a hissy fit. Um, and Ronald got mad and we see in the the finale, all the behind the scenes stuff. So if you had James come back and bring apologize and bring a new cake for Roz. Yes. That was us trying to fix the situation. I mean, our entire intent with the show was to, you know, hopefully not not do anything to Ronald, but have our characters be in situations around him, right? And to kind of have Ronald act as a moral compass. And the birthday party was something that was planned early on for James to kind of, you know, freak out, have the wrong idea and ruin the party. And we thought it was funny, you know, that this entitled Hollywood celebrity would think it was all about him and ruin the party. But we forgot to like fully account for the fact that by that point in filming, we were over two weeks in, Ronald had really started to build relationships um, with these people. And so what might've been funny on the page for James to come in actually really distressed Ronald. Like who would do that and come in and ruin a party? And it was just one of the more human elements where we all immediately went, whoa, maybe this was one step too far because we didn't want to do anything like this. We didn't want to make him feel bad in this way. So we immediately, you know, tried to fix it as best we could and avoid things like that for the rest of the shoot. Because, yeah, we we didn't think that would go too far, but we all felt like, ooh, maybe this was one step in the wrong direction. Yeah, maybe it would work better early on, like in, in week one yes. when he didn't know James as well. Because by that point, he took the blame for his giant shit, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, you know, and also we thought Ronald would would do great and 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 be the guy we hoped he would be but we did not know how perfect he would be and how much our cast was falling in love with him and really bonding with him there was that human element that we could not account for and it was actually wonderful to see develop but uh it meant we had to adjust what our story plans were as the show went on mm -hmm. yeah I always tell people you guys struck gold casting him um because he's just a good dude and it sounds like you all were surprised by how much of a good guy he actually was. Well, we were looking for a good dude and we tried very hard to find a good dude. So in that way, things went as planned. But I think he exceeded our expectations uh, beyond what we could have known. And not only being a good dude, but he somehow was like hitting story beats for us without us trying too hard. I mean, the fact that Ronald is who he is and a really decent human being and a nice guy who I'm very happy to have gotten to know, but can also kind of innocently the first time he meets James Marsden say, oh, you're in that Sonic movie? Yeah, I heard that was not good. I heard that was not good. And he wasn't trying to be a jerk. He was just being Yeah, honest. that was just the first thing that came to Yes, him. I don't think he realized James was like a lead role in that movie. Um, and so, you know, he was also producing a ton of comedy for us and reacting to the scenes in the way we hoped but never, it never turned into us feeling icky about um, what he was doing, uh, you know what I mean? Or or what we were doing to him, uh, say for that party. So we really lucked out and kind of you know, all four. Yeah, it, it, it was also like you were saying, like he was doing things that were just perfect for your storylines because then he goes home and watches Sonic and then comes in the next day. Like that's the perfect button. <laughs> yes, that, exactly. Like. <laughs> You know, in, in another world, we would have tried to get him to watch Sonic, but we did not. You know what I mean? We were not smart enough to give him a DVD of Sonic. You're like, oh, in case you want to watch it that night, we heard you had a conversation with James Marsden. That was all Ronald. And, and you know, that was day two. And so we were like, whoa, this is really special. You know, right from the beginning, we could tell, oh, this is going even better than we hoped. Mm -hmm. um, I think the moment everyone fell in love with him for real was when he showed A Bug's Life to Todd. So how did that work on the weekends when they're not in court, but they're still sequestered? Did he just ask production like, hey, can we rent a bug's life because I want to show it to Todd? Well, we had heard that, you know, when a jury gets sequestered and they might not want the jury watching the news, live TV, they provide, you know, entertainment to them, magazines, books, DVDs and DVD players. So we had set that up as part of our reality. And I wish that uh, I could give credit to one of our writers for planting a bug's life, knowing it would play out that way. But I think we were kind of just looking to fill it with, you know, 20 year old movies as part of the reality of what the court system might have. And again, that was all Ronald who saw that in the mix and picked it and realized, Oh, there's something in this I can use for Todd. Mm -hmm. 
yeah yeah I think that that was it it was like oh he's so nice and then he's like you know he could have immediately cast aside Todd I I think like a lot of people would like this is a weird guy like I'll be cordial to him but he really brought him in well exactly I mean our plan with Todd was to maybe you know have Ronald be a little Mm distancy from him and as the episodes went on as the show developed we were going to create situations for him to get to know Todd better and ultimately befriend him and take him in was the, was the hope, but Ronald did it immediately. That was another thing. It's like, Oh, he's moving ahead. He's on episode three already. You know what I mean? So um, it was another one of those instances where we were just like, wow, it's almost as if he had read the script. So when he did jump ahead uh, in your scripts like that, uh, what kind of new uh, plot lines did did you have to come up for him? Like with Todd, well, I mean, I think, for example, like um, like the makeover that he gives Todd was something that was added in during production uh, that was not fully planned beforehand. But because we kind of got through Todd's story beats earlier than we thought and we needed more, we were trying to then push for that to happen as it went on. And we had to watch how their relationship was kind of developing. And then, OK, well, now that they're here and they've had this conversation, you know, they talked about, you know, Todd, you should wear different clothes or, you know, Ronald was kind of hinting at it like, oh man, you should, you know, try some different styles. So then we we're like, let's get him out to that mall, you know? So that was like an adjustment to to make it happen on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, well, speaking of uh, things that he did that were too good to be true, you guys, we see in the finale that you you cut the, the racist joke beat for Noah of how to get out of jury duty, but then he said it anyway. And Maybe. Ronald just, fed you the line and we see you guys just uncontrollably laughing in the control room (laughs) we truly couldn't believe it yeah like but were there any other instances like that where you guys just lost it like you thought like he'll never do this and then he did it um i think the big question was how was he going to react to chair pants that was a big one for us like is he going to go and still support todd here which we were hoping or not because we thought well we're making it difficult on him now because this is getting pretty strange um and that was one where again we kind of had plans for how to make them bond over it but we did not need to go to step three and four on that like ronald kind of embraced him immediately Mm -hmm. yeah because i think like especially when he was trying to get into the van at the beginning was like this could be very annoying just how long it takes (laughs) yes but he didn't care um you guys took um several field trips um to Margaritaville and the shirt factory. And I know everyone in Margaritaville were actors. So what was that like going, you know, prepping these places and outfitting them with cameras um, so that he wouldn't notice that, you know, there are cameras there either just like in the courtroom. It was intense. We, we prepped a lot before we started filming with Ronald. And then even during filming, we knew it was gonna be our trickiest day. So we faked a COVID scare. We said, oh, someone had a, uh, uh, a possibly positive COVID test. So court shut down for the day. Everyone has to stay in their hotel rooms. And what we actually did was we took the entire cast to rehearse the full day, uh, which started in the courtroom, went to the factory, ended at Margaritaville. Most of the episodes were filmed over two to three real days, but episode four, the Margaritaville episode, the entire episode is one day shooting in, 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 you know, we're shooting everything in real time, but it was edited down from one day of footage. And so that was, we we really had to uh, have all our contingency plans ready. We had to have the actors fully prepped. So we did we did a lot of extra prep for that. Mm-hmm. Um, were you concerned that he wouldn't buy the Jorf joke, that it was a slur? Yes, very, <laughs> very concerned. I mean, to the point where, you know, when, when we, when Jorf came out of the writer's room, we, you know, three months before we started filming, went on urbandictionary.com and added Jorf and its definition so that it could be planted there and it wouldn't seem like it was just added by a user, you know, two days beforehand. Uh, so we were trying to seed it out and build as much of a background as we could on it. I mean, very clearly made up uh, in a joke way. But uh, yeah, that and and ac- honestly, the big part of Jorf was getting... Todd in the shirt in a way that Ronald wouldn't stop or tell the judge or tell the bailiff about. And you can see in the episode, he's even telling him like, don't put that on. I wouldn't put that on. And we had to get that because on. Because evidence. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we had to get it on. And what we were really nervous about was Ronald 
you know, who can be a bit of a rule follower telling the judge or telling the bailiff about the shirt. And we had contingency plans for why we'd make it okay. But he did try to get him not to wear the shirt, but then he also didn't rat him out because he's a solid guy. So that, that we, we were he very doesn't snitch. Shirt to there. Yeah. He didn't snitch on the James calling the paps. So exactly. <laughs> we were wondering, we're like, he hasn't even mentioned James Marsden calling the paparazzi. Does he, does he realize what happened? And we asked him afterwards. He's like, oh yeah, I immediately knew what happened. And we're like, okay, good. <laughs> That's how good he is. So he is. He is. Um, what, what was it like to direct all the actors? I know they had earpieces, but you know, this is, it's basically like live theater. You only have one shot at getting this right. One take. Um, It was exhilarating and fun. Uh, and also, uh, difficult i will say i i'm looking forward to uh scenes to direct that have less than 14 people in them uh that's uh that's always tricky but um you know a big part of this show was uh the casting of it and putting getting the right group together i really had to have a group that uh not only wouldn't be recognizable hopefully to ronald but that i could really trust uh to be in there because um you know there's a lot of real time that was spent together that is not in the show that's on the cutting room floor. And they had to be on for all of that. So even though we did a lot of rehearsals before we started shooting and we'd actually gather the entire cast to the courtroom in the mornings, about two hours before Ronald got there and we'd run through the day and rehearse and remind people, here's some ideas for jokes. Here's the beats we need to hit. Um, a lot of it was just having a lot of trust in them based on our preparation and, and knowing that they could do it and that they could deal with the curveballs, that when something didn't go perfectly as planned, you know, we'd given them the resources they need to still get out of that. Th that was the biggest part of it. But it, yeah, it was it was a new way to think about scene work. Yeah, I, I was wondering, it was like, obviously, James Marsden is supposed to be James Marsden on a show, but I was like, would he clock Kurt Fox, like from Parks and Rec, you know, like... Kirk was my my biggest worry, you know, uh, because and when Kirk auditioned, he had um, just his mustache uh, and he was growing in some scruff around it. And, um, you know, I was like, man, I think he's pretty recognizable. But if he grows the beard, I said, Kirk, if you if you're going to do this, you've got to grow the beard in uh, uh, so that we can hide the mustache, because I think the mustache is very iconic to Kirk's mm -hmm. look. So we tried yeah. to cut down on that. Um, but then we found out Ronald was a Parks and Rec fan on like day two or something like that. So we did kind of, Kirk said, you know what, I'm going to back off a little bit. Um, we tried to seat him in places where he wouldn't be in Ronald's direct line of vision. So Kirk could still speak up and get his jokes in, but Ronald wouldn't be staring at him for the whole day and wondering, wait, how do I know that guy? That's that's how we tried to balance that. Mm -hmm. did, did he had ever go to up to him and like hey you look like see which joe <laughs> no no never never in fact although uh after the reveal when all the actors went up to give him hugs um kirk did tell him i'm sewage joe man i'm sewage joe i'm sewage <laughs> joe and Ron went oh my oh my god how i mean just how um what, what, what was that day like when you fi guys finally did the reveal like it's just it obviously it's so overwhelming for him but you guys are so excited to tell him and embrace him and yeah a lot of nerves that day i will say you know we were nervous every day about what we were going to pull off or which you know crazy comedic stunt we were trying to do we would get very nervous on those days big swings like chance etc but man we were the most nervous on the reveal day because we were just worried about doing it right i think we kept rewriting that judge's speech like every day the whole week um, up to it. And, um, by that point, we just all cared about Ronald so much and loved him so much. We really wanted to try to do it in the best way possible that really celebrated him and tried to make what had just happened somewhat understandable to him. Mm -hmm. Um, so we were very nervous about that. And uh, the entire cast and everyone in the production office was very emotional on that day. Yeah. Sure. Um, is there anything you guys caught that you wish, uh, would have made the show? There's a lot of moments, um, you know, there, there's a lot more behind the scenes moments. I think uh, that- You need to release, oh, just a documentary about that. Yeah, okay. yeah. The I think that last episode could have been an hour and a half long. Yeah. And we, we have a lot of footage. There's some cut jokes and some cut moments that are my favorites um, that didn't quite make it. But, you know, at the end of the day, we were condensing this into 
eight, you know, 28 minute episodes. And you do have to keep a certain storytelling pace um, and move through stuff. And just like when you're making anything, you find, oh, there's not quite room for this, or this feels like more of a tangent and we're losing track of what we should be following here. Um, one of the biggest ones was Todd, beyond being into uh, gadgets and uh, and body <laughs> extensions, uh, was also a convicted felon uh, oh. in the show uh, who had had his record cleared so he could serve jury duty, but he told the judge in voir dire that he has a record and we kept it a secret. And that was another thing that Ronald was supposed to be curious about and then work through and find out. But again, Ronald just accepted him so quickly that that became less important about yeah. his past. And, and Let's go, just go shopping, you know. You yeah. Don't need to, yeah, we didn't focus on it. Um, well, lastly, would you do this again, like a season two? I don't know if you can do jury duty again, though. I don't know if we could. Yeah, I, I will say that when we wrapped on this, uh, which is a year ago now, we were all so emotionally spent that we said, well, we're never doing anything like this again. Uh, but with a little time and uh, catching up on sleep and uh, learning from some of our mistakes on how to do it better, I think a lot of us are trying to wrap our heads around, man, maybe, maybe we can talk about a way to try to do something again, but we don't quite yeah. know. Maybe next time it could be a, like a DMV, something equally mundane. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, well, Jake, it was great speaking with you. Thanks so much for your time uh, and have a great day. Congratulations. Michelle. Thank you. Appreciate it.